All right, so in honor of Mario Day and the new movie coming out, I wanted to showcase this LED matrix Mario clock. Um, it connects to your Wi-Fi, and every time the minute changes, Mario will jump up, hit the blocks, and the time will change. Um, it's pretty awesome, and it looks really good uh, <laughs> in my gaming room with the CRT monitor that I got. Um, so I, I really like it overall. Um, and so this is a uh, really cool project. I'm going to share the links to all the products I use below and kind of walk through a tutorial on how to build this for yourself. So the first thing you're going to need is all the parts for your LED matrix and a controller. Uh, for this project I use an ESP32, um, I thought that would be easiest. And SparkFun has a wish list. I'll put the link in the description below and on the screen um, that has the LED matrix, power supply, um, has the ESP32 with headers. Um, so you're going to have to solder the headers onto the ESP32 controller for this project. Um, also has a uh, DC barrel jack adapter for that 5 volt uh, power supply, which is useful. Um, you know, you may have a 5 volt power supply sitting around that you maybe have with, you know, Raspberry Pi. You can, you can utilize that. Um, but there is some soldering and a little bit of like electronics knowledge that you may need to have uh, when embarking on this project. But I'll try to cover this um, at a high level. So even if you don't have those things, you can at least get one um, LED panel up and going with this Mario clock. Um, you know, for more advanced projects, um, you can combine these uh, LED matrices together to make even bigger matrices and display bigger uh, d displays, clocks, what have you. Um, but for this one, we're just going to use one 64 by 64 matrix um, and do this Mario clock. And I will walk through the pain points uh, that I've seen in other videos. Um, and I think the biggest, uh, you know, heartburn I have with the 64 by 64 matrix is whenever you're reading a tutorial, um, the wiring diagrams aren't always the best. So I'm going to try to break that down in an easy to digest form in this video. So one thing you're going to have to use in this video is a multimeter um, and you're going to have to measure voltage um, on your power supply that you're using for your LED matrix. Uh, you need to make sure that the polarization is right. Um, so the positive goes to the positive, negative to the negative, etc. Um, and uh, there's a great uh, video on how to use a multimeter at SparkFun. I'll link it in the description below. Um, but overall, basically, uh, with our power, DC power supply that we have, 5 volts, 2.5 amps, we'll cut the end off, we'll have two wires, um, and we will have to put the leads of our multimeter to the wires, use that little dial in the middle, set it to the right voltage level, and then we're going to need to see that it's positive um, to make sure that it's the correct um, uh, setup. Otherwise, it's going to be negative, the polarization will be wrong, and uh, your power supply will not work correctly with your LED matrix. So again, uh, you're going to need everything on this list. You're going to need a um, 5 volt uh, power supply, uh, a micro USB cable for the ESP32, um, an ESP32 microcontroller. Um, I use the SparkFun uh, ESP32 thing. Uh, you're going to need a uh, LED matrix, uh, which I got from SparkFun, but you can get anywhere um, you'd like to. Um, and you're also going to need a soldering iron and some electronic solder as well. For the solder, just get anything rosin core and that's thin. And for your soldering iron, um, there's cheap ones on Amazon. I'll link in the description below as well um, that are, have fairly thin tips, uh, easy to use. There's also full kits that have every, everything you need to clean your soldering iron and all that. Um, and then we take the female um, and male headers here and we solder them to the ESP32 thing um, and this way we can use jumper wires and then wire up everything with our controller to our LED matrix um, and so what you can do with these headers is they are a bit long um, you can just get some uh, uh, wire cutters and just snap them So what I'm doing here is I'm actually just kind of marking where the uh, header goes to. I'm pulling out the pin so I know uh, where to cut that header. Uh, so I just use some pliers to pull out the pin. You'll see the pin missing there. And then I know where to cut and then the um, header is the optimal length for that controller and I can cut it easily. So you're going to do this for both sides of the ESP32 
thing microcontroller. Um, so you're gonna, you know, just make sure you're cutting in the right place. Make sure you have the right number of male headers to solder into those female headers on the microcontroller. Um, and basically once that's in there, we'll just hook this up on our uh, helping hands stand to help us solder. Um, it'll hold it and then we can solder on the headers. So I have the headers being held underneath. I have those male ends sticking through the back and then I'm gonna add some solder to each of those and we'll solder it on. So some tips for the soldering portion, um, definitely wear proper protective equipment, you know, wear uh, safety glasses, uh, be in a well ventilated room, um, don't do any of the things you see me doing in this video. Um, and uh, off, obviously the soldering iron gets very hot, it melts the solder uh, onto the, the electronics. Um, but the key here is you, you want a thin tip on that soldering iron, it'll make your, your life a lot easier. Um, you you want to make sure it's on a, a hot setting, so definitely turn your, your um, soldering iron to a, a higher setting. And then touch the male header piece that's, uh, that's sitting there, so touch the work and then have your solder touch the work as well that's, that's being heated up. And then the solder should melt onto the work and you should have basically a bunch of Hershey Kiss looking um, solder points on your ESP32 and I'll show an image on the screen so you can kind of see what that looks like. And once you're done soldering it should look something like this and you have a fully functional ESP32 board. Um, the headers are soldered on so we can easily put in uh, jumper cables so we can you know rapidly prototype and set up this uh, uh, project. So for this project you need at least a 5 volt 2 amp power supply. Um, what I did with mine is I cut the male end off with a pair of wire cutters and I stripped both ends of wire at the end and once that was complete I just put a little bit of solder on them um, just to kind of stabilize them because we're going to screw them into the um, uh, barrel adapter terminals. But prior to doing that, we're going to use our multimeter. So we're going to plug in our uh, power supply into the wall after we're done with it. And then we're going to touch the leads uh, of our multimeter to each end of that power supply. And if it reads positive 5 volts, then we know that the red wire, that's the positive, is on the right spot, and the black wire, the negative, is in the right spot as well. And then when we use these barrel jack adapters, there is a plus and minus, where we're going to use a small screwdriver and screw those in. We know where to screw them in now, and we know it's set up correctly. Once that's complete, you're gonna need the male and female barrel jack adapters, and uh, your power supply is gonna go in one of these, and your LED matrix is gonna go into the other. So again, I have my power supply plugged in, and then I cut the ends off, and I have two ends here, and I need to figure out which one's the positive and the negative. And so I'm going to plug up my multimeter to the ends of the wire here. And you'll see that I have the yellow one is the positive. It's clamped to one side. And I have this black wire, that's the negative lead, and I'm touching it to the other side. And you'll see that it says five volts, and it's positive five volts. So I know the polarity is correct. Now, what were to happen if I switch wires? If I do the opposite, I'm gonna get negative five volts and that's the wrong polarity. So I need to ensure I have the right polarity so I know which one's positive and which one's negative. So now that I have the right polarity, I can tell that that's, since it's positive five volts, right, coming out of my power supply from the wall so I know that that is the positive end and that's the negative end so when I use this barrel jack adapter I can put it in the right spot wiring on this 64 by 64 matrix um, you have your inputs JIN input and you have your outputs J output you also have your power input and that's where that power plug that came with your matrix goes in and of course the other end goes into a barrel jack adapter, which goes to your power supply. Uh, what we use here are female to female 
um, jumper wires. And so we have female to female, and then we use male jumper wires to go uh, male male to the. This is why you need both female female and male male jumper wires so you can get the plugs in the right spot. All right, so we need to ensure that the pins going into the ESP32 are correct. And uh, the typical setup for an ESP32 is here. So it's gonna show you your red, green, and blue inputs. Uh, that's the R1, G1, B1, etc. It's also gonna show you your data inputs, your A, B, C, D, and E. And you know, if you have a bigger panel, uh, 64 by 64, it has that E channel. Um, and it's required for these LED projects. Um, however, you can also do this on a 32 by 32 panel. Um, so you can see that uh, on the right of that E pin, it says required for um, 132 scan panels, like a 64 by 64 matrix, right? Um, in most tutorials, they don't tell you uh, what pin the E pin actually is. So I had to do some uh, uh, digging here to figure out uh, where that E pin went. Um, and also, on my LED matrix itself, it doesn't actually have uh, one of those data slots uh, labeled correctly. It actually has uh, another ground where the data pin is. Um, so that made it even extra fun. All right, so what I had to do here is copy and paste that ESP32 pinout um, to Word, and then one by one, I connected from my LED matrix to my ESP32, and I just highlighted as I, as I went, because um, you know there's a lot of pinouts here, and it can get a little confusing, um, and it was an easy way to get that done. I will say with the LED matrix, the 64 by 64, the D pin, that data pin, is not labeled correctly. Um, it's labeled as ground, and, and so that led to some confusion, and then the E pin, which is not usually defined in projects because most people use 32 by 32 matrices um, wasn't defined either and so uh, the E pin needs to be uh, with pinout 18 on your ESP32 um, in order for this Mario clock project to work correctly all right so for uploading the code to your ESP32 microcontroller you can do it from this website um, it's going to install clockwise just hit the pound button in the center and then just hit install clockwise. Ensure your ESP32 is plugged in via USB, micro USB to your PC, and it will um, remove whatever code's on there and install the Mario Clock code. Um, could take up to two to five minutes to complete, and once that's done, um, you're ready to connect to your ESP32 via Wi-Fi, and the instructions are on the page there um, with a default username and password, and you can attach it to your Wi-Fi network um, so your clock is up to date. So once this is installed to the ESP32, you can uh, unplug it from your computer and plug everything in on its own. And you can connect to the ESP32. You're going to see a clockwise Wi-Fi access point. Uh, the default password is 12345678. Um, and you can just do this on your smartphone. And then it's going to um, request that you find your home network and give it the password so you can set it up on your own network. Uh, this way your clock can stay up to date on whatever time zone you're in and you also have to put in your time zone as well so I'm on the East Coast in the USA so I put America slash New York right and, and that's via uh, the Wikipedia page and I'll uh, link to that in the description below um, and basically you just give it your uh, Wi-Fi network password um, and then once that is set up uh, the clock should be up and going with the correct time and you should see everything um, with Mario, the blocks, etc. If you're having any errors that look like this, uh, don't fret. It's probably due to the wiring setup you have. Um, something's incorrect, right? Um, there's always some issues with uh, pinouts. Sometimes you miss some. So just make sure you go back and, and check your pinouts. Make sure it's right uh, to get this clock working. So these are just some of the images that I had because I had to uh, figure out what the pinouts were because they were not listed online. But here it is in the end, your very own Mario clock on a 64 by 64 LED matrix. Hopefully you found this video helpful. Hopefully you enjoyed the project. Uh, please like and subscribe uh, for more videos like this.